What's up, people? Welcome back. All right, brief reminder, depending on when you see this video, if you would like to vote on the latest poll, is Ubuntu going in the right direction? There is one day left to vote or less, depending when you see this. Apparently, a lot of you don't think that Ubuntu was going in the right direction. I'll have all the links below in the show notes. As far as this video goes coming up, this video was not on the menu, was not on my schedule to do. However, the past week, I have received uh, two excellent wonderful comments on the video why Windows users cannot switch to Linux. Now when I say that I don't mean all users obviously. I have switched kind of. I switched to a dual boot mode but that's strictly my preference. As far as this video goes two very good comments. Thank you for all of your comments who took the time to post comments and your perspective. I would like to highlight two comments on the video. Two gentlemen, one is from John Plubel Plubel. Uh, if I say your name's wrong, I deeply apologize. Please forgive me. All right, he says, my experience with Linux. Installed on the same hardware that I run with Windows 7 64-bit professional. He says he spent over $1,800 uh, two years ago for testing. He removed the boot drive and replaced it with a 250 gigabyte hard drive, okay? He says, I tried Linux Mint, Mint first, and it seemed to work out, but the onboard sound on my MSI uh, something only worked immediately, and the default color scheme hurt my eyes, he says. Okay, next up was Ubuntu 14.04 LTS. I installed this the day after its release. I was underwhelmed by the Unity experience. With some effort, I was able to get it looking somewhat acceptable. I set the auto height of the task application bar on the side on the side to on okay this did not work properly as sometimes when i hovered my mouse over at the left edge of the screen the bar would <clears throat> excuse me the bar would not pop out also noted that chrome would sometimes just stop responding okay this is some of the software that he tested software test would be uh, open office with write and, and calc both worked fine gimp works but works better in windows VSCD locked up constantly works better in Windows. Lightworks loads and freezes works better in Windows. Only two features that I know will lock up. LMMS loads up and runs, but it locks up if I add more than four instruments to the baseline. Works straight in Windows. Audacity works good. Sometimes mice and headphones go out, plus I can't use my Morthvox, I think I'm saying that right, inline plugin. Works without any problems in Windows. NetBeans and Eclipse both work fine. I tried to run Left 4 Dead from my Steam library. It only got past the title screen. All right, he says, of course, there is the Windows software that I can't run, namely Crazy Talk and Toon Boom Studio. He concludes, so overall, I am still underwhelmed by Linux experience. I used to have a negative disposition towards Windows back in the version 3 dot days to 98 days. XP was the first stable release of my experience. Frankly, Ubuntu reminds me of Windows 95 getting close to XP, but not there yet. Well, I don't think it's that bad, but I, I understand the, the, the experience that John had here. And, and, and he continues, as for the viruses malware thing, there are, there are only two reasons why Linux distributions are not having as much trouble as Windows. One, their distribution sites are better controlled. They don't have the giant download button that also downloads adware, malware, and unwanted uh, search, search bars, toolbars. Yep, I would have to agree. Two was market share. Linux is heavily used in the high-end server industry where locked doors and seasoned professionals keep them safe. Yep, if and when Linux becomes heavily engraved in the consumer market, place this will change. Yep. And finally, he says, I only tried two of the Linux distributions, and quite frankly, I need to get back to work. I got this idea to try this after watching several, after watching several dozen Linux videos on the YouTubes. I wish this was this was one of them. Thank you, John. Uh, Linux is not just as polished as Windows. Lacks driver support and doesn't run as smoothly. My old hard drive is back in place. I never thought I would say it, but after, but after I spent one week spent in Linux, I miss Windows. Wow. Okay, John, I I understand. The, the Linux kernel, the core, is a wonderful piece of human engineering. It's, it's amazing. The problem is the lack of quality apps, it would seem, compared to, its, to, it, to the uh, Windows or Mac OS counterparts. And it would appear that at least some of your problems were with this. In terms of a complete Linux distribution that is totally polished, as you say, as what I would think Windows 7 is my quality standard, 
or some people prefer Mac or some people now are buying Chrome OS, I would have to agree right now, although it is getting better, much better, that there is no, from my experience, and, and I guess in yours, there is no Linux distribution yet. I must stress that yet there is not quite entirely as polished as the Windows 7 or a Mac OS. Now to be fair, I don't have a Mac computer yet. From what I understand, people who have Mac computers, they wouldn't switch for nothing. Thank you, John. All right, there is another comment here. This one's a little bit longer, but this one is even, I think this one's probably a little bit more, well, it's definitely more t detailed and a lot more um, perception or a lot more uh, that is focused on here. This is from Ahmed Sayir. I hope I say it right again. Again, if, if I say your name wrong, I deeply apologize. Let's get right to the comment. This is one of my all-time favorite comments on any of my videos. So thank you, Ahmed, for taking the time. He says, I would either comment, speechless, get back to Windows, or try to criticize some of the things you have said so you can improve your next videos because you are really doing great. Thank you. You just need to keep getting more experience with Linux. I always would love more experience so you can make better videos with more accurate information. Well, I try to be as accurate as I can. I am human. I'm not perfect. I'm, I make mistakes. However, let me just say from my opinion, as far as this video concerns, I believe I am very accurate and I, and I will explain why as, as, as I read through this. Okay. Ahmed continues, but I dare you to use uh, GNU Linux only. No dual boot for th two or three months in a row. Windows and virtual box is allowed. Thank you. I'm sure this will push your experience to, to the roof. Most of the time, Ahmed, the uh, experience I've had with Linux has been th through the roof, meaning I'm, I'm impressed. Even better if you can keep it for six months in, in, a row, in, in a row. If you don't like it, you can, can forget about it and stick and switch back to Windows. Well, I enjoy dual booting. As far as trying exclusively uh, Linux distributions, I've tried them, man. I've tried to completely drop Windows 7. I can't because sooner or later the bugs will get to me and I'm not alone. Something will break. Screencast recorder, the, emult, the, uh, the video editing software, video drivers, I gave up on that. But I believe that Linux, a good quality Linux distribution can be 90 to 95% complete, as complete as any Windows or Mac OS system. So far, and I have to stress that, so far, in my opinion, although I believe one day a, a Chromebook desktop may eventually replace my Windows machine. All right, now, this is a long comment. I don't mind, so please, folks, if you decide to stick around after this, please bear with me. He continues, I'm really sorry for the too long comment, but I really liked your video and the efforts you are doing, and, through, and though some critics might help though some critics might help producing per perfect future videos. Again, thank you so much, I mean, you're very kind. Okay, decentralized. If you mean too much, too many flavors by decentralized, then I guess it's an advantage as most of the solutions or needs you want for environments comes from prepackaged ready out of the box. There are too many flavors. It's confusing, uh, especially for beginners. Uh, some of the flavors are, according to Linus Torvalds, and in case you don't know who Linus Torvalds is, he's considered, I guess, the father of the modern Linux kernel. A couple years ago, he called Linux an unholy mess. Uh, sorry, correction. He called one flavor, one version of Linux, an unholy mess. That's from the father, one of the founders of the Linux movement, not me. And translation, in my opinion, what he was saying is at least that version of Linux uh, basically sucked. I don't know how else to say it. The ironic thing is that version of Linux he was talking about, I don't think it's that bad. I actually use it sometimes. It's not my favorite, but too many flavors, too many distributions. There is no standard of quality, and I'm sticking to that opinion. All right, freedom is the most important aspect with GNU Linux, and it doesn't necessarily mean cost-free. Um, I won't read all this. I met, I totally agree with the freedom part. That is one of the advantages of Linux. Completely agree. Thank you for that. All right, quality is also another aspect that proven the best with GNU Linux. Uh, again, I'll go back to the Linus Torvalds statement. If we're talking about desktop Linux, desktop Linux only, mom and pop Linux, families, for the masses, it's not, it is not proven to be better than, say, a Windows 7 or a Mac OS machine. However, Ahmed continues to uh, say here, I do not refer to end users because most of the time they don't really know what's best for themselves. I would have to agree, and that's what I'm here for, to help 
you know, these new users pick and choose the ones that I believe are some of the best. That would be a Zorin, Linux Mint, and Ubuntu, from my experience, in that order. Okay, uh, more than 95% of the top 500 computers, giant data centers, NASA, Google, uh, Google governments run Linux. Most of the embedded devices for mobile phones, electronics, robotics, TVs, cars. I mean, I totally agree. When it comes to governmental use of Linux, it is better. When it comes to desktop Linux, I must stress this, when it comes to the mom and pop type of Linux for the masses, the quality is not there yet, but it's getting better. Okay, standardization. GNU Linux has been pushing the standardization of the internet and different technologies for many years. Yeah, that's fine. I have no problem with that. Rushing too fast doesn't necessarily, doesn't mean less quality too. Oh, I would have to respectfully disagree. Uh, how many times has a new distro come out after six month release cycle and it's it's terrible and, it, and it's not just me saying this there are very more qualified exclusive Linux users that sometimes after something new is released it feels like it has been rushed again I'm talking about desktop Linux not the systems used in government so for me at least from what I've noticed sometimes rushing too fast is just not good Okay, if you don't use GNU Linux 100% of the time, I don't. I use it a majority over Windows 7, but I do not use it 100%. I've tried to, but I just can't. Uh, please be cautious with your advice to new users as they might take your advice as the absolute truth when you, when you didn't finish your learning curve yet. Um, you, I mean, you're right. I still have a lot to learn when it comes, more to learn, at least when it comes to Linux. There are many different distributions out there that are not designed for beginners such as say Arch Linux and that might be something I might tackle in the future so there is more learning that I can choose to do if I wanted to do that um, as far as desktop Linux and from my experience for beginners it can be a mess uh, for many people for many Windows users who have tried to switch to Linux or try to use it and they say it sucks it may not be a fair statement sometimes especially if they don't read the documentation or at least look some of my videos where I've pointed them to user-friendly distros such as Linux Mint, Ubuntu, Zorin and stuff like that. Alright, uh, let's see here. If your quality standard is Windows 7, I bet you have been comparing it to Windows 95 MP, Windows 8. Not anymore. Uh, I have to dual boot because sometimes I'll do, I'll try to screen record in Linux or screen edit and the, and the freaking thing just crashes it doesn't work I don't want to spend all day trying to figure out a, a bug I'm sorry but I don't so I have to re go back to my emergency parachute which is Windows 7 and that's why I've said in the past it is my quality standard because I just haven't had those crashes those issues uh, that I've had with some Linux not all the time sometimes but I still need Windows 7 until the day comes if it comes where I can completely replace that machine but so far and I have to stress so far that hasn't happened never a virus please catch a virus give it to me and I will send you back a file that you can safely execute or if you really trust your antivirus but actually it's a modified file of the same functioning virus yep exactly the same virus but undetected by your antivirus well look um, my antivirus more specifically my methods my maintenance that's what I hate in Windows is maintenance so far has proven to be very successful in keeping my Windows machine clean some of the updates download install reboot wait reboot as one of my friends says wash rinse and repeat that really sucks in Windows and finally he says here and the blue screen of death, your case is the exception. Everyone else watching this video has seen a few times already. Everyone, I seriously doubt it. Uh, I've never seen it. Am I stunned? You betcha. But I've experienced several, well, not blue screens of death in Linux, but I've experienced several black screens of death in Linux, usually with some kind of Linux kernel upgrade panic video drivers. But overall, for, for the most part, in the Linux distributions I use, it's been mainly positive just not as good as my Windows 7 counterpart. That's it. He says, he says, I'm really sorry for the too long comment. No problem. Thank you. I really liked your video and the efforts you are doing and though some critics might help and, and this might help produce perfect future videos. I mean, thank you. 
this is an excellent comment, opinion, perspective on your part. Uh, I think I've answered or responded to this comment and the one before as best I could. Sorry it took a long time, folks, but these were two very excellent comments. Uh, I think it was worth expanding on these. So, you know, the next time a Windows user says, you know, Linux sucks, you know, maybe they downloaded the wrong distro. Uh, maybe the file was corrupt. Maybe they didn't take the time to read the, the documentation. In that case, then it's, it's somewhat their fault. But, you know, sometimes it's not. They've done their best. They've tried it. It doesn't work. And they have to go back to what they were using. That being said, I believe that Google's Chromebooks is the future of the Linux desktop if there is such a future for a desktop based on Linux. Uh, the Chromebooks are selling through the roof. Apparently they work out of the box. I'm assuming everything works. So that's very promising when it comes to a Linux desktop for the masses for mom and pop. Um, uh, one last thing, I have a tentatively scheduled a Chromebooks for Dummies podcast with a Chromebooks user. I won't say who it is now. We're scheduled to record out here in the next couple of nights, barring any unforeseen event. Look for that in the future. But as far as uh, my experience in Linux, Linux desktop, it's amazing. I'm really impressed. It's just I have not been able, and I've tried. I've tried, but I've not been able to replace my Windows machine yet with any Linux distribution. But for now, I enjoy dual booting, strictly my preference. I will continue to advocate Linux for new users. Try it out. You may like it the way I did and have a feeling if a single distro works out for you, you might be amazed at just how good Linux can be. Thank you for four years of Total OS Today channel. I, couldn't, I could not be here without you guys. This channel was created for you, all the new users out there who wanted a, a starting point, some place to get started, someone who can be as friendly as I can be. Uh, thank you for four years. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. If, if you can, please consider a small donation. It really, really helps maintain the channel. That's it for this long one. My apologies. Thank you for watching and listening. And as always, I will catch all of you sometime in the future.